magic. I love magic. I love magic. So that I could just be an iPad kid and do this. I should literally reread this book on Halloween. Baby, <laughs> baby, honey, baby. I am loving it. This is not funny. <laughs> Okay, good morning. Hello. We're doing a 24 hour readathon today. It's not just gonna be today. I think I'm gonna try to do 12 hours and 12 hours today and tomorrow because I do have things I have to do, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I have to live my life. I wish I didn't, but I did start the timer. I paused it a little while ago because I had to get ready. I started this morning by continuing Hollow Heathens on Kindle Unlimited. So this is the book that I'm primarily focusing on right now, but I was 170 pages in when I started this morning. I started the timer around 6.40 a.m. It's now 9.25 and I have 21 hours and 42 minutes left. And I'm now on page, I'm 43% in now and I'm on page 256 of Hollow Heathens. Oh, I forgot to mention that this is a fall themed 24 hour readathon. So I'm only gonna be reading fall books throughout this time frame, and Hollow Heathens is one of them. So far, it is like the quintessential fall book. I'm really enjoying it. I really like the writing. The romance is okay, it's just not like. I'm pretty picky with my romance, but I am enjoying their dynamic. I'm just not like head over heels in love for the two main characters, Fallon and Julian, but I love the setting. I love the writing and I just love the like vibes from it. It is entirely fall vibes. The other book that I've started so far, I'm going to be reading on audio and that's A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I listened to it while I showered and while I started getting ready. So I'm literally still only on chapter one. I'm listening to it on 1.3 speed because I feel like this is gonna be a bit more dense writing that I do not want to miss much. So I'm not even 14 pages into this book and I've been listening to it for about 20 something minutes. But I'm just gonna take this slow. I probably will try to go on a walk at some point later. And then I could also maybe listen to this if I have to do any other work. Or I'm thinking like if I do laundry or clean up, then I will listen to the audiobook. Yeah, I have the timer paused right now while talking because I want to actually read for the 24 hours. Like I wanna see how much I actually read in that time frame. I think it's gonna be a little bit of a slower reading, at least so far. I've read less of Hollow Heathens than I was expecting in the time that I was reading it. And then this I'm listening to slower. So this will not be like my reading pace. I do think I would read this a bit slower though as well. A Discovery of Witches is about a witch who works in Oxford and is like a historian. And then there's like a vampire guy, but I'm enjoying it so far. Like I like the writing and I love the vibes. Like I said, this is just all about the vibes. This is all about the fall vibes. My TBR for the rest of the 24 hour readathon though. One other option that I do kind of have is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I've never read a Shirley Jackson before, but I've seen the show for Hill House and I really love it. I know that it's pretty different from the book though. I'm intrigued to read this. I feel like this might be a lot, like I don't know how easily I'll fall into this. But my other options that are kind of higher on the list are If We Were Villains. They're mostly on my Kindle because I did check like Kindle options. My other main option, like my top priority to get to at some point, mo most likely possibly tomorrow when I do the rest of the timer since I said I'm gonna split this up, most likely between two days should hopefully be between two days. I have If We Were Villains by ML Rio. I've heard that book is really good and very dark academia. And then another option I have is One Dark Window which is like a very fantasy gothic vibe. This book, Hex by Thomas Old, H Huvelt, Huvelt, sure. That's supposed to be like a really scary witchy book. I've heard it's scary. I don't really know that much. I haven't heard that much about it. I just like having a lot of options. I'm not gonna get to all of these or even most of these. And then another option I have is The Familiar by Lee Bardugo because I love Lee Bardugo and that's her new release that I would like to read. Those are my options. I'm going to sit down and continue reading Hollow Heathens and then possibly I might need to pause for a bit to work on something and then we'll get back, okay? Okay. I love magic. I 
magic. I love magic and I love witches. Well, hey there, it's been time. Time has passed and I am not succeeding in getting a lot read today. Well, I got a lot read today, but not like how much I wanted to be reading because I wanted to split this up between two days. It did not happen, but I figured I'd update with like my progress. So I guess this is just gonna be how much I literally read in 24 hours by stopping and starting the timer. The update is that I've been really focusing on a discovery of witches since we last spoke. So I am now 117 pages in. I read a little bit more with my friend and then I listened to more of the audiobook. So like I said, the audiobook is a much slower progress than my actual reading pace. I am six hours six hours and 12 minutes into this. So I've been reading for six hours and 12 minutes today, which I mean, that's still pretty good. That's still pretty good. I did a lot of other things today as well. And I think about three and a half of that, maybe even four hours of that was listening to A Discovery of Witches. No, not, it definitely isn't four hours because I haven't only read for two hours. I haven't only read Hollow Heathens for two hours. So probably more like three and a half hours was A Discovery of Witches and I'm not even 120 pages in. Slower pace reading this because I am listening to the audiobook. I am really enjoying the audiobook. And then I don't really have any, I don't have anything else to say about Hollow Heathens. I am just 52% in now page 306 and it's kind of just going the same. I will say that one thing about A Discovery of Witches is I don't really know if I want to binge read this. Like it just doesn't seem like a very bingeable book. I'm very much enjoying listening to the audiobook so I think it's useful to have if I need to do something else. If I want to keep listening to it I can like do stuff while I'm listening to it but the only thing about that is it feels like it's using up time when I read faster than listening to the audiobook. So yeah I don't think I'm gonna pick anything else up right now as in I don't think I'm gonna start anything new. Hill House is intriguing me but like I don't I don't want to start a new story especially because these are kind of Hollow Heathens isn't like dense but there's like a lot of lore and history with the town and the characters and the covens that I want to keep that in check in my mind and with reading A Discovery of Witches as well where there's a lot of fantastical magical terms and stuff like that like I don't really want to add anything else into the mix. Also, my sheets are done. Just put them on. <laughs> it's only 9.45, so I'm definitely gonna read more now before going to sleep because I'm not really like tired yet. But yeah, I'm probably going to stick with Hollow Heathen so that I could just be an iPad kid and do this. So it's 3 p.m. the next day, right now. And I think I've probably read for two and a half hours today, something like that. Yeah, this is not exactly the direction that I was expecting this video to go in. Let me update you and let me move my dolls out of the way. <laughs> Here we have it. I have been continuing to read Hollow Heathens. I'm like 64% in now. I read this morning. That was like the main thing that I focused on this morning when I woke up. I had a Zoom call just now and I had a few other things that I had to do today, but I'm kind of struggling. I'm kind of struggling a little bit with continuing Hollow Heathens right now. I think it's just focused so much on the romance and that is not my favorite thing in this book at all that I've lost a little bit of motivation and it's 
been turning me off of reading it. I just need a little bit of a break from it because Discovery of Witches, I'm still enjoying it, but like I said, I don't think it's something that I want to binge read or like just speed through. I think I want to keep that as more of a book that I listen to throughout like my days. So I did actually decide to pick something else up and I only decided this like a couple hours ago right before my Zoom call and that is If We Were Villains. I mentioned that this is a book that I had on my TBR and I'm enjoying it. I'm 9% in right now, so like not far. 34 pages, 34 Kindle pages. I am going to really sit down and read that because I just think I need, I think I need something a little more grounded and something that might be a little bit more propelling with a thriller, not thrillery, but kind of like that like mysterious aspect. Like there's, there's a murder that's gonna happen in this book and I wanna know why the main character starts the book in jail. So I'm gonna keep reading it. I'm going to keep reading it, but I didn't actually tell you how much time I have left. I have 15 hours and 15 minutes left on my timer. So I'm gonna do one quick little thing and then I am open for the rest of the night. I mean, it's 3.14 right now. So for the rest of the day, if I read for five or six hours today, that's intimidating. That's a little intimidating. <laughs> then I should be able to get a good chunk read and a good chunk taken out of the timer. I would love to finish the timer tomorrow. Don't know how possible that is, but we'll see. All right, we have got an update. I've been reading more of If We Were Villains and I'm really liking it. I'm on page 75, like on the Kindle version. My Kindle is being so slow right now because it's about to die, but it's an old Kindle. So it takes forever to charge and it also has to be like positioned so precisely that I can't like read while it's charging and I don't want to read on my computer I guess I could I could also read on my phone, but that is so not the vibe for hours So I literally might pop over to Barnes and Noble and buy if we were villains because I'm having a grand old time Guys this book. I mean I picked if we were villains obviously for reasons. It's dark academia that's what I've heard and you know, that's good for fall, but like it's set in the fall time Like it starts in September at the beginning of the school year That is one of the reasons why I chose it for the fall theme. It fits so well There's literally a scene on Halloween that I just read where the characters are all performing Macbeth The main character is drenched in stage blood and it is so good. It is so good. They're all performing like by a lake. These characters are all in this exclusive theater school or art school and they are in the acting program and, and they are fourth years and it's just they literally just do Shakespeare. You probably know that because people call If We Were Villains the secret history but Shakespeare. I don't really know that much about, about Shakespeare. I've taken a Shakespeare class but <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. It's giving, it's giving. So I think I'm gonna focus on this book, book and then I'll pivot back to the other books later. I am gonna put my Kindle to charge. I'm gonna pop out to Barnes and Noble and I'm gonna go buy if we were villains. just filmed. I just turned on my camera all excited about having If We Were Villains now in my possession. I wasn't filming. That's really great. I'm on page 79 and I'm so freaking excited to now sit down and actually continue reading. Honestly, I'm gonna get the angle going, but honestly, I want to annotate, but I am so scared of annotating a book. I don't know if I'm gonna actually love because then what if I mark up a book I don't love and then also what if I want to like return it? I'm not gonna underline yet, but I'm gonna get I'm gonna get sticky tabs so that I can remember. This book is so freaking good. 
baby <laughs> baby honey baby i am loving it i better not be speaking too soon i better not be speaking too soon but i'm loving this i don't think i'm gonna annotate because i think this would be such a good book to annotate on a reread because i don't even know what themes or what things i would really want to focus on or look for in my annotations i would literally just be like underlining favorite moments or underlining the interactions or relationships between the different characters and the the oh uh, it's so complicated and messy and so fun i am on page 145 right now act three i'm loving it ah! oh my god the end of act two like i'm not gonna say that it was surprising but the actual like last line that last second why is this not focusing on me it's probably the lighting i wanted to have a little bit more ambient lighting i have 13 hours and six minutes left i am gonna keep reading it's crazy that i haven't finished the book yet but i had to pick pretty long books to read from <laughs> but hopefully i finish this <laughs> no i will finish this funny meeting you here not funny we're on day three i have 11 and a half hours left it is 8 p.m i read for i don't actually know two hours this morning no i don't actually know i'm on page 232 i figured i would just give you something for today because now i've been doing a bunch of other stuff today let me read i think i could finish this in three hours i have 120 pages left did i just say four hours three hours what did i say anyway I'm literally reading the back of the book. <gasps> Let me actually hunger down, bro. I finished. Nine hours and 18 minutes left on the timer. Yes, I did cry. These are my stand-in tabs. I'm going to bed. I'm not completing this tomorrow, but I have so much time left to probably finish two more books. Okay, I literally keep like laughing i feel like i've just ran a marathon like i feel insane right now <laughs> what does it say anaya <laughs> why am i quoting that vine <laughs> that's literally how i feel right now i don't even know how to explain i don't even know how that correlates <laughs> to this book it's 10 30 i'm not tired i say that i'm gonna pick up hollow heathens right now read a page and then <gasps> And then pass out like that's what's gonna happen i want i want every edition of this book i'm about to go like drop a drop a bag bro i'm going on blackwells that new cover that new cover's ugly like can we just be honest with ourselves why do i still want to go get it just have another edition i need to i literally am about to google google youtube if we were I'm about to listen to this audiobook on repeat. I'm about to reread this freaking book on my Kindle all the time. I'm about to reread it on my phone. I can't breathe. I literally can't breathe. Oh, yes, thank you. I have this thing where I buy books after I actually finish them so I could have them in my library. And this is what happened with this perfect murder mystery, Dark Academia, based on Shakespeare and X. Wait, the UK edition is so good. What? 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 No, I'm <laughs> I'm about to I'm about to buy it. No, I I need another. I literally literally need another edition like right now. Why are you showing me Tongaloo? I just googled. I looked. I want if we were villains. Yeah, thank you, Queen. Hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, oh. I'm going to be talking about a book that I read two days ago now on Halloween, which <gasps> was very thematically appropriate. I'm gonna reread. I'm gonna reread. I'm not actually probably not gonna do this, but I should reread this book on Halloween. I should literally reread this book on Halloween. Not if we were villains as white. <laughs> I wonder if the, the Hua. And they were roommates. Oh my god, they were roommates. This is not funny. This is literally like not funny. <laughs> no, it's not funny. Okay, I'm gonna freaking go now. If you see me with another copy of this book, look away. It is now the next day, day four of this challenge. 
I have nothing to say. No, I do have things to say actually because I was able to get only one hour knocked out so far today because I literally just have not been home all day. I only got home an hour ago. I just ate dinner. I'm already winded from talking and this lighting is not great. It is 6.43 now on Friday. It's day four and I still have eight hours left on the timer. I'm gonna read as much as I can tonight, but I am really tired. But the main thing is that I finished If We Were Villains last night and I loved it. Like I literally loved it. And I said this last night, I think I might buy the UK edition or I think I might ask for it for like Christmas or something just cause I should, I should relax. I don't need to buy I don't, I don't need to buy another copy of it, like, right now. But like I said, I have eight hours left. So yesterday, or last night, when I stopped reading, I had, like, nine hours and 18 minutes left. So this morning, I read for about an hour and 16 minutes of Hollow Heathens. So I think I have three hours left in Hollow Heathens, and I really want to knock it out and finish it. I do think I can finish this book, since I have about three hours left, and then I think I can finish one more book. And I think I can get to The Haunting of Hill House, which would be really exciting because I've actually been pretty interested in getting into this book. But I didn't want to start it because I kind of thought it would take me a bit. Like, not that it's super long or anything, but I don't really know what Shirley Jackson's writing is like. It could be a, like, writing style that I read a little bit slower. I am probably going to get to reading. Like I said, it's almost 7 p.m. right now. So if I read for three hours, that'll get me to 10 p.m. And then hopefully I can just finish this tonight and then I'll have five hours left. I don't think I'm going to be able to start another book tonight. Like, I don't think that if I finish this now, I'll have the brain power to get into another book but we'll see i'm my eyes are tired that's one thing we're gonna get into hollow heathens that was my phone i'm done i finished hollow heathens oh my god it's nine o'clock now so it actually took me less than two hours to finish thank you jesus so I have six hours and 11 minutes left on my timer. I think that's more than enough time to read Haunting of Hill House, but I am gonna stop reading because I'm so tired. That literally the entire time I was reading, I just looked like this. Like the entire time. I literally just look like how I look right now. I, I did that face and that's just what I look like right now. I'm so glad I finished it. I am really disappointed in this book, with this book, because it started off so strong. I still think the author is really talented in the way she writes, but this book was way too long, way too long. 574 pages is insane. I'm gonna go to sleep now. It's day four, tomorrow will be day five. Let's see if I can somehow read for six hours and 11 minutes tomorrow. I'm pretty confident that I could read all of Haunting of Hill House in that time. It's 235 pages. The audiobook itself is six hours or seven hours. I saw two on Libby. One was six hours and one was seven hours. So I think that means that I could read it faster than that. Even if it's just a little faster than either one of those, I should be able to finish it in that time. So that's where I slay. And then if I have any time left over, I'll listen to A Discovery of Witches or read a bit more of that because I'm not going to complete another book in that time. Tell me why I'm suddenly not tired. Tell me why I just washed my face, did my skincare, got in bed, turned off my light, and I'm not tired. Like, now I'm awake. <laughs> I've been awoken. Should I start haunting of Hill House? Should I start haunting of Hill House? <laughs> Should I start haunting of Hill House? I'm gonna start it and then read two pages and be like, you know, okay. I really wish I was just recording. Oh my god, my hair looks a little crazy. I'm sorry. Also, I got a facial today, so... I really wish I was just recording while reading because I had a reaction to this moment. So it's the first or the next morning after their first night staying in Hill House. I didn't really like tell you what this is about. I'll, I'll let you know in a little bit. It's the first morning after they stayed the night in Hill House. And the thing already about the house is, I guess I can give you a quick synopsis. So there's this character called Dr. Montague who is very intrigued by this house called the Hill House. So he invites some people to stay in it with him to kind of investigate like what is really going on with the house. And for the most part, he's really just calling the house evil and he's already alluding to this idea that the house is alive i don't know if he's used those words exactly but he's just called it evil so it's kind of like its own entity you know 
pretty fun. So the main characters are Eleanor, who's kind of like the main character, you're kind of, kind of following her for the most part, and then Theodora. So those are the two people he invited. He invited other people, but they're the only two people who decided to actually come. And then Luke, who is a nephew of the woman who actually owns Hill House. So the doctor doesn't own the house. He is just like investigating and doing some investigations, trying to see or experience what's really going on with the house. And already the doctor was saying this the night before that he's like looked over the map of the house. Like it's very confusing. The house like doesn't make sense in its structure and the next morning eleanor and theodora are going like waking up getting ready to go get breakfast and meet the doctor and luke and they're going through and they're like i think it's this door and then i think it's this door and then i think it's this door and like none of them are the right door to get where they're trying to get they finally find oh my god that line is crazy and it's like not even played off as like scary they finally find the doctor and luke by like calling out to them so they find the right door and then the other door opens and the doctor and luke are there and they say you will never believe this now of course but three minutes ago these doors were wide open we left them open so you could find your way we sat here and watched them swing shut just before you called well good morning like it doesn't even linger on that <laughs> you're just left with that information okay no they're, they're gonna keep talking about it but that is that's pretty spooky that's pretty spooky and that's pretty fun like she just dropped it so well and by she i mean shirley jackson i'm gonna keep reading honestly the thing about nothing really happening their first night in the house that's even spookier than if something did happen is the fact that the house is like waiting it's waiting to reveal itself It's literally four minutes shy of 9 p.m. AKA 8.56. And I still have four hours and 15 minutes left. And I literally swore to myself that I would finish the timer today. I, I'm going to finish Haunting of Hill House tonight, but if worst comes to worst, then I will read this tomorrow. This is most likely gonna be what happens. I picked this up, the Dead Poet Society. It's not the. Dead Poets Society from the library. I put this on hold when I was coming up with this idea. Like I knew what books I was interested in reading for this video because Dark Dead Poets Society is like dark academia kind of vibes. It's kind of like one of the OGs. So I put a hold on this at the library, picked it up from my library today thinking like perfect. I could probably read this in about two hours, which I will hopefully have left over after finishing Haunting of Hill House. Come to learn, this is not a time where the movie was based off a book, but a time where they novelized the movie. I've never seen Dead Poets Society. I don't really want my first time experiencing the story to be in the successor to the original. So I'm very conflicted, but I really like there. I don't have any other option for the last two hours. I could just keep reading Discovery of Witches, but I'm not going to finish it. And I figured like it's so small that then I could just complete one last book. I don't know if I want to read this because I would rather watch the movie first. And I don't have time to watch the movie because tonight I have to read Haunting of Hill House and then tomorrow I work all day. So I need to read this before I go to work. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to get to reading and I will talk to you when I finally finish. The Haunting of Hill House. I'm done. I have two and a half hours left. It's 11.09 p.m. now. I had to take breaks in between reading the last bit because I was getting really tired but in the last like five ten pages I was like not as tired I'm not gonna give like thoughts on this right now I think I need to sit with them for a little bit I will say this is probably one of the first times I've felt kind of actual terror while reading I'm not gonna give thoughts but I will say that I did enjoy it like I think it was a really good book but I think having to like binge it didn't really do it justice I have two and a half hours left. I really cannot decide if I should read Dead Poet Society because I've heard that the book is not really very good. I mean, I think some people like it, but again, it's a novelization of a movie. 
and I'd rather see the movie first. This is on Kindle Unlimited, so if I want to, I can read it on my Kindle. But like this little tiny book, like I feel like I'm so tired. I'm so tired. <sighs> It's official, I did it. Hey guys, it's been a few days since I did wrap up this challenge and actually complete it. So the last thing you saw was me and the timer running out while I was listening to A Discovery of Witches for the last 30 minutes left on the timer. Cause I finished A Dead Poet Society. A Dead Poet Society? Why do I keep doing this? Dead Poet Society. I finished Dead Poet Society in about two hours out of the two and a half hours that I had left. So those last 30 minutes, I just continued listening to A Discovery of Witches and I ended up on page 156, finishing off the timer. And then otherwise, I did complete four books. Four freaking books. I read them. <laughs> and now we will just do a quick little wrap up of how many pages I read in the time that I had, which was 24 hours. And my thoughts on them because I didn't give I didn't give like entire thoughts you know I didn't really like wrap up my feelings about everything I think you could kind of gauge what I thought about everything I gave I gave some thoughts how many times can I say thoughts but let's actually just go through each book that I read and how many pages I read in the 24 hours so starting off we had hollow heathens on my kindle when I started the timer I was 170 pages into this book already so then I completed it obviously and the book was 574 pages so that means I read 404 pages from hollow heathens throughout this time and this book ended up disappointing me because it started off so good i loved the setup of this story i loved the setup of the town of the characters like i wasn't obsessed with any particular character or anything like that but it just felt like i was watching a fall tv show like it felt like the vampire diaries or like gilmore girls but like fantastical or paranormal i guess would be the better word because it just you're just in this small town with magic and witches and covens and they have like these town events it's literally august at the beginning of the book and they're still decorated or they're like already or still i don't really know which decorated for fall and halloween like that's just how the town is it's almost like Halloween town where all year round it's Halloween time kind of everyone knows each other everyone knows the families like there's a lot of history with the families because they've all been in this town forever so I really love that aspect of it and like I said like they have like the town events that they all go to so seeing all the characters gathered together like that was really good in the beginning but it really dropped the ball with the actual plot <laughs> I guess with the romance and everything because the two main characters are like th there are reasons why they're not supposed to be together i still don't even really understand what the reasons were well no i kind of like understand what the reasons were there were just things and then there were like curses and i just didn't care and then i think the magic was super underdeveloped in this world and with these characters so it's like the setup was fun the execution was not so I ended up giving this three stars because I really, really did enjoy the beginning, but the end just dropped severely. So that was the first book that I started. Not the first book I completed, but we'll talk about it in that order. Then, oh, okay. Then I jumped into If We Were Villains by ML Rio, and I think you guys probably already know what my rating for this book is because how could I, how could I react like that and not give this book five stars? I loved it. I just found myself being really attached to the characters like even if i wasn't loving everything about them like they're very flawed and unlikable characters but i kind of liked them well the thing about this book is even though i don't know a lot about shakespeare i loved the inclusion of shakespeare there was a lot of actual shakespeare like lines like copy and pasted into this book because they're performing Shakespeare plays, but I didn't mind it because even if I didn't fully understand what they were saying actually Like I could get the context of what they're what, what they're feeling for each other What the characters are actually feeling because that's a big part of this book or that's like one of the methods that ML Rio uses to Communicate between the different characters like if there's something going on in their actual personal lives 
it comes through in their acting and in the plays and I really enjoyed that and the main characters will literally like speak in Shakespeare quotes like just to each other in a normal conversation and it's like they're speaking another language to each other I was really entranced in the performance scenes because they were just so good I loved the setup and I loved the like I love the high concept of each performance that they performed, each play that they performed, like Macbeth and Romeo and Juliet. I loved the ideas behind them. Like, I mentioned the Halloween scene, which is when they perform Macbeth and they perform it by a lake, and it's just like, really? Oh, well, the thing about those performances that's really cool, okay, I'm kind of rambling right now, is that the characters get their role in a little letter or in a little note and they can't talk about who they're playing to their friends to their castmate and they like rehearse their lines they learn their lines stuff like that they like get costume fittings and stuff like that but they don't know who's playing who until the day of the performance and that was just so interesting like it's pretty unrealistic that they would be able to pop out a banger performance like they do without ever having like a proper rehearsal but i loved the idea of it and it was so so fun this book reminded me a lot of in my dreams i hold a knife just because the setting's kind of similar like seven people in an academic setting they're very close with each other but there is a lot of tension between the members of the group like of the friend group so even though they like love each other their bond is so strong they, they kind of hate each other in some ways there's there's some tension there and then someone's murdered there are differences. I mean, there are some similarities, but there are differences, like, of course. This book is a little bit more unrealistic than, like, In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. I feel like that was a little bit more grounded in reality. I mean, this is grounded in reality, but it's really dramatic. Like, it's really, really dramatic, which you kind of have to be with Shakespeare. But, like, In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, it felt a little bit more on the actual thriller mystery side. This had aspects of that, but it definitely felt more like a drama and, like, a dark academia where that, that setting is, like, really important or that, like, genre, that feeling that it's trying to evoke is very important where it's just a little bit more unrealistic. It's a little bit more high concept in that way. So, I loved this book. It was five stars. I really actually literally want to reread it already and experience it again. I haven't gotten these characters or this feeling that this book gave me out of my mind so I loved this. It was definitely five stars. It is a new favorite. I have not bought the UK edition yet but I am so tempted to but I'm gonna try and hold off, okay? Then I got into The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson and I'm gonna be honest, I think my feelings haven't actually changed that much. I know I said that I wanted to sit with them and I do think I did but I think kind of i think i ended up giving this book 3.75 which feels low like i think it is a masterful book like shirley jackson did a really good job or i don't know that feels like so diminishing to say you did a really good job shirley she created something really great with this story and this setting and this concept with the house and the characters in it and them kind of like losing their minds or at least mainly eleanor losing her mind like the house's effect on its inhabitants so i really liked that i think there were some moments that I just kind of wasn't caring that much. I don't know. There were some like humorous moments between the characters that I didn't, it didn't hit for me. I found myself thinking a lot of the TV show. Not a lot, a lot, but I was thinking of the TV show because I saw that first. I know the characters' names from that. They're very, very different. These are not at all the same characters as the TV show. Like Mike Flanagan, he just took the names and the setting from this but didn't really take the actual story and the plot from it at all so i think that was a great adaptation but i i don't think this was a good book to really binge like i don't think this is a book that should be binged so it's one that i would consider revisiting in the future i think it did a lot of great things i enjoyed this enough that i would definitely read something else by shirley jackson but i wasn't like enamored by it and then lastly we have dead poet society this book it was really just there to fulfill the last two hours that I had left on the timer. It did nothing for me. The only thing it has done is that I do want to watch the movie because I could see some good stuff in this, but I could just tell that it wasn't the full picture. The thing about it is it felt like how a screenplay can be kind of barren. Like, screenplay writing? Screenwriting is very different from novel writing, like, from prose, and it was lacking prose like it was lacking a lot of in-depth analysis or in-depth writing of the characters and their relationships and just even what was going on so it just felt really barren 
like it didn't feel like there was a lot here to grasp onto or to really even invest in there was one scene in here that made me quite uncomfortable and upon checking goodreads it was an inclusion into this book or it was a change from the movie that was absolutely unnecessary like the way the scene plays out in this book does not play out it does not play out like that at all in the movie and i just don't know why it would be changed for the book for the novelization and i just really think that there's not really much reason for this to exist it's not doing anything else or doing anything better to expand upon the story that the movie did which i still haven't watched but i know people love the movie so i just know that this kind of doesn't really have a place i can't speak for that like 100 percent. there are people who really do love this book but i just don't i don't see it i also don't even feel like i can rate this book because it wouldn't exist without the movies therefore it kind of it can't stand on its own so this one kind of is no rating if anything it's like a 2.5 like it just exists and then lastly we have a discovery of witches by deborah harkness i did not finish this book i listened to most of it on audio and i got oh did not go through the page count let me do that really quick so okay hollow heathens like i said i read 404 pages from hollow heathens throughout this 24 hours and then if we were villains was i think 350 something 354 pages and then haunting of hell house was 235 and then this, I'm gonna do the Kindle pages. That's probably stupid. This is 166 pages, but these are like mini pages. The Kindle edition is 133 pages, and I think that's more accurate to like this kind of formatting. So I'm just gonna write that. And then here I read 156 pages from A Discovery of Witches. But I did not say my thoughts yet for A Discovery of Witches, so we will say that really quickly. The thing is, I was kind of really excited about it in the first 50 pages, maybe? the beginnings of the main characters meeting i was so there for it like i felt like there was so much tension between them and then the tension melted away very quickly they're just attracted to each other already and like that's it i'm 156 pages in and they kissed they've already kissed what are we doing this is a this is a trilogy why did they kiss already i just wanted there to be slow burn and time built up like i wanted them to build their relationship like i wanted them to build their feelings for each other and i just don't know that that's what's going to be happening i like the writing and i like the character so i'm going to continue it i'm not dnfing it i just kind of have lost a bit of no motivation i'm gonna be honest and i've lost a bit of the excitement that i was feeling in the beginning of this book but we'll see that's that let's actually do the math and add these boys up together so that means i read 1282 pages in these 24 hours there are 1440 minutes <laughs> in 24 hours so i did not read a page a minute that's still pretty good i'm proud of that look i'm not the fastest reader in the world i i can i can say that confidently that's the end of this video thank you so much for watching i had fun i actually would do this again so bye